you want to hear a real horror movie, imagine you've got to give a two-hour lecture and then four hours before you're supposed to give the lecture, you realise you've planned the wrong lecture and then you've got four hours to plan a new two-hour lecture from scratch. That's two minutes per minute. It's been a long day. So I've had a pretty rough day. I am knackered. And I was going to sack off doing the rough cuts today. But then I realised how much I love you guys. And besides, the rest of the rough cutters have really got me into the mood to do a horror movie. Yesterday I made an effort and I watched The Wicker Man for the first time, which I've really been meaning to watch for a long time and finally got around to it yesterday. Uh, I'm not talking about the remake Wicker Man, which some of you might think is the only Wicker Man, which came out a few years ago and starred Nicholas Horseface Cage. And I've only got one thing to say about that fucking remake. No, I'm talking about the 1973 original starring Edward Woodward, the man whose name sounds like a fart in a bath. So, Edward Woodward you might know as the old guy from Hot Fuzz, but he was also, in the 80s, a slightly less old but still pretty old guy in The Equalizer, which is a sweet New York-based kind of action-type serial. I've got a real affection for Edward Woodward from my childhood from watching that TV show. And The Wicker Man is his major film role. I don't really know why I didn't get around to seeing it sooner. I mean, on top of it having him in it, it's also widely regarded critically as the best British horror film ever made. And it regularly comes in in the top ten of just British films, full stop. So the plot of The Wicker Man is you've got this devoutly Christian policeman who lives up in the highlands of Scotland. And one day he receives a letter from this little island off the coast of Scotland called Summer Isle saying that there's this young girl who's gone missing and he should come over and investigate um, this missing this case of this missing girl. So he goes over there, all the locals on this island, they're kind of like the British hillbillies, but they're kind of like as close as you could get to hillbillies in the UK, kind of real backwards, remote people who just got weird, odd customs. Anyway, so Edward Woodward goes to this island and no one there has heard of this girl, Rowan Williams, except they kind of seem like they have, uh, like they're keeping something back from him. So, you know, he carries on investigating it and in the end he kind of uncovers maybe that there's some like weird pagan rituals going on on this island. But what I didn't realise about this film is it's kind of, the first half of it at least, is kind of like light. It's not as scary or as freaky as you think it's going to be. And there's lots of very weird extended musical scenes, like these songs go on for like three minutes. And that happens a few times, and there's one very peculiar bit where Brit, Brit Eklund is uh, naked, and she's dancing up against the wall, and Edward Woodward's on the other side, wrestling with his sexual guilt. But what all that does is it kind of only serves to freak you out even more when in the last half an hour of the film, it gets really serious, and Edward Woodward sort of starts stumbling inevitably towards his fate, which, I mean, I knew before I watched the film because this film has got one of the most famous um, final five minutes of any film, I think, that I've ever seen or heard of. I mean, if you've heard of The Wicker Man, you've probably heard of what happens at the end, even if you haven't seen it. I mean, even though I knew what was going to happen, it still managed to freak me out because all the kind of... The, the lack of seriousness in the first half of the film just really makes the seriousness of the uh, the last... I guess, like, the last third of the film just really stand in stark contrast and really sort of freak me the flip out. I mean, the sight of seeing Christopher Lee wearing um, a wig and prancing around like a knobhead on a beach in a lady's dress, that uh, really was a kind of cinematic landmark for me. But if you'll excuse me, I'm going to get some shot eye now because I am massively goosed. See you, rough cutters.